Hi to all. This is Sister Nasia from the Department of English. We shall discuss the theme, A Portrayal of Resistance, in the short story Draupadi by Mahasweta Devi. The outcomes of the short story Draupadi are students will be able to explore the tension between the exploited tribals and the nation state, significant issues of gender oppression, marginality, female subjectivity, language, and identity. Analyze the women who are showpiece of social political scene to be held high or a flesh piece to be violated to bring disgrace to the group or a nation she belongs to. The last one is they'll be able to apply the values learned from the story. Will help them to stand by the women to resist the socio political objectification of their bodies and overcome oppression. Mahasweta Devi has written 100 books to her credit, including novels, plays, and collection of stories. She has won the prestigious Gnanabith and Magasese Awards for Literature is concerned with the plight of the tribals living on the fringe. Mahasweta Devi becomes more and more involved with the lives and struggles of the unprivileged tribal women and the atrocities inflicted on them. Draupadi is about the Santal tribe girl who is vulnerable to injustice but resists the burnt of social oppression and violence with indomitable will and courage and even try to deconstruct the age-old structures of racial and gender discrimination. Devi situates her story against the Naxalite movement, the Bangladesh Liberation War of West Bengal, and the ancient Hindu epic of Mahabharata engaging with the complex pol politics of Bengali identity and Indian nationhood. The tribal uprising against wealthy landlords brought upon the fury of the government, which led to Operation Bakuli that sought to kill the so-called so tribal rebels. The context of the story Draupadi is set against the political charged climate of West Bengal in 1971. Draupadi focuses on a young Santal woman, Dopti Mahajan, a feared Naxalite who, along with her husband Dulnama Meji and their comrades, is responsible for the death of Surja Sahu, the landlord in Bakuli. The story translated from Bengali to English by Gayatri Chakravarti Spivok follows the efforts of the local police and army officers led by the Sena Naik to capture Dopti after having hunted down and killed her husband. The most interesting part of the story is that Dopti Mahajan is portrayed as an illiterate, uneducated tribal woman, yet she leads the polarized, politicized life amongst all because she is engaged in an armed struggle for the rights and freedom of the tribal women. Dopti in the first two parts of the story fights shoulder to shoulder with her husband. It is in the third part of the story that she is provoked to fight male oppression alone. Draupadi raises her voice against extreme torture and atrocities inflicted on the tribals. Her way of protest is very different and makes it an extremely shocking, powerful and innovative narrative. She seems to be an ordinary tribal woman but in reality, she has created stir among military authorities who were on massive hunt for her. In the conclusion, the use of the white cloth, which is associated with the purity and innocence, visually contrasted with Dopadi's black body and is very powerful. So here, Mahasweta Devi represents Dopadi not as victim, but she is equal to men who fight for her rights. Powerful not simply because it brings before the reader a story of state violence with such alarming urgency, but because it tells of an un unthinkable act of courage 
of reclaiming and affirming our humanity in the face of those that seek to deny you of its true unimaginable violence. Though please captured by Officer Senanai, who instructs the army officers to rape her to extract information about the rebel uprising. Ironically, the same officers who violated her body insist that she covers up once she is done with. Stubbornly, Dopti rips off her clothes and walks towards Officer Senanai naked. Thigh and public hair, pubic hair matted with dry blood. Two breasts, two wounds. Senanai is shocked by her defiance as she stands before him with her hand on her hip as the object of his search and exclaims, there isn't a man here that I should be ashamed. The story is stripped away from the Mahabharata's grand narrative and royal attributes and situated in Champavumi, a village in West Bengal. The chill horror of Draupadi is re reconstructed in Devi's story, subverting the narrative where Draupadi is rescued by man, Lord Krishna. Instead, in Devi's narrative, Draupadi is not rescued, yet she continues to exercise her agency by refusing to be a victim, leaving the armed man terribly afraid. Draupadi is a woman of strong mind and will, as she defied the shame associated with rape and sexual abuse, which is extremely relevant to Indian society, especially in the onset of the movement where many brave women came forward with their stories. Devi's repression of Dopti encapsulates what Spivak means by a gendered subaltern. Through the dislocation of the epic princess Draupadi to the tribal rebel Dopti, Devi is able to present voices, perspectives are otherwise unspoken and unheard of. The character of Dopti allows us to view the subaltern's identity with regard to the hegemonic structures seen through the policeman and officer Sena Nayak. Thus, Dopti's body becomes a site of both the exertion of authoritarian power and of gendered resistance. Dopti bears the torture as she is raped by many men through the encouragement of the voice of another man, Arjit, that urges her to save her comrades and not herself. However, the attack on her body fades this male authority's voice as she candidly reacts to the police. Her refusal to be clothed goes against the phallocentric power and the exploitation of her body gives her the agency to step away from the hegemonic patriarchy of the policemen. Devi illustrates how any conflict or war results in the woman's body being the primary targets of attack by men. In the context of both the Naxalite movement and the Bangladesh Liberation War, both men and women are tortured but it is much worse for women as they additionally undergo sexual abuse. Even though Dopti has been physically abused, she refuses to be emotionally wounded. Although there are many facets to the mythical Draupadi's character, Devi focuses on the infamous incident where the princess is almost disrupted and supports it to suit Dopti's context. Devi has always said that she is interested in the stories of ordinary people, which is evident through the subversion of Draupadi's rape. Towards the latter part of her life, she focused on presenting the narratives of ordinary people. In Draupadi, Devi has not allowed her female protagonist, Draupadi, to be submissive and conquered by the male-dominated society, unlike Draupadi from the Mahabharata. Devi presents a strong woman who, despite being marginalized and exploited, transgresses conventional sexual and societal standards. Dopri subverts the physicality of her body from powerlessness into powerful resistance. She does not represent the tribal woman by romanticizing her depiction of Dopti, but instead realistically represents her 
through simple language and complex emotions, Draupadi recognizes a woman's body as an asset through which they can resist the socio-political objectification of their bodies and overcome oppression. One wonders whether the story interrogates the lofty patriarchal trad traditions of Indian culture and what kind of identity is created for Draupadi. In the epic, Krishna's meditation serves to construct and glorify male dynastic expansionism as divine narrative. Draupadi is as much an object of that patriarchal narrative as she is viewed as an object by the men within the narrative. Lord Krishna's miracle, in fact, proves the sexual terms in which women are perceived as objects in losing her honor, Draupadi would have dishonored the male genealogy. Instead of being saved by a miraculous incident, Mahasveta allows multiple rape of Dopti. She remains naked at her own insistence. Her nakedness becomes an aff affront to the masculinity of the attackers. What is the use of clothes? You can strip me, but can you clothe me again? There isn't any man here that I should be ashamed of, she asserts. Rape in a patriarchal society is synonymous with the power of manhood. On the other hand, the rap ra rapability of the woman's body is because it is believed that a woman's honor lies in her inviolate body. Here, Dopidi does not let her nakedness shame her, torture her, intimidate her, or let the rape diminish her. Male sexual violence is defeated simply by its demystification, and Dopidi emerges as terrifying super object, an unarmed target. In Mahasveta Devi's story, Draupadi acquires a new self definition and becomes the active maker of her own meaning. She refuses to remain the object of a male narrative, asserts herself as subject, and emphasizes on the truth of her own presence. She constructs a meaning which Sena Naik simply cannot understand. She becomes that which resists counter male knowledge, power, and glory. Therefore, he is terribly afraid. In Mahasweta Devi's story, a miracle does not happen and Divine Krishna does not appear to save her honor. The story very successfully portrays what actually happens to women when they are seen as the objects. She presents her mutilated body to Senanayak as the object of your search. She stresses on the materiality of what women are for men literally a target on which they can exercise their power. Mahasveta Devi's Dopadi deflates the egotism and manhood of her perpetrators by simply refusing to accept the semiotics of her multiple rape. For her, rape has turned her sex into a physical wound. She has not followed the cycle of violence through retribution, whether through herself or through a male agency. Her action strongly asserts, my honor does not lie in between my legs. To sum up, we can say that being a product of the third world, Mahasveta Devi is aware of the different forms of victimization that the women face in the society one way or the other. In Draupadi, she has taken the case of Dopti with a mythical parallel from the epic. She does not romanticize Dopadi but presents her case, her subjection to male tyranny as she becomes the victim of the lust in male dominant world. Draupadi is unlike any other female characters in the stories of Mahasveta Devi. She is the representation of a female figure ready to stand up for her rights and her beliefs and is the only female to maintain power over her torture. She can make Sena Naik feel the fear. In short, she asserts herself as the male figure and Sena Naik becomes the female figure. He is terrified by Draupadi and is unable to anticipate her next move. So Draupadi is representative of millions of tribal women who are fighting against oppression and who can dare to challenge imperialism and patriarchy. 
The tribal woman is marginalized in more than one way as she lives in a constant fear of victimization. This clearly shows that Mahasweta Devi's Draupadi is a metaphorical resistance to an elegy of the Subhartan. Thank you.